Welcome back to Big Boy. We're hanging out doing Barbarossa, the EFS system, Eastern Front Series, or whatever it's called. Army Group Center, 1941. It's uh, turn nine, eighth and ninth of uh, July. And let's, I thought we might just have a quick look and get a little catch up, a little video catch up and have a look at each sort of route of advance and we can you know, just have a see, a little look and see what's going on. Let's start up in the north where, the, where there's a little less happening. So we have Minsk right here. And I'll zoom in a sec so you can see what's going on. But that was just taken uh, two turns ago, maybe two turns ago. And there were a couple of units hanging on around here that we had to surround. That was to put them out of supply. And... You know, uh, there was a little bit of a complicated combat here, but nothing too exciting that uh, caused any uh, concern. This line here, from here down to here, actually, represents the kind of the limit of supply. So everybody beyond there, except for some units that moved into that uh, area this turn, is already out of supply. And we're going to put next turn... Uh, with great feats of memory. So for instance, these guys here will go, will be out of supply uh, using emergency supply next turn, but everybody else pretty much is already out of supply. But these guys just moved into here this turn. Uh, similarly, these guys were out of supply last turn, but they'll be in supply this turn because we managed to move the railhead down to here, right? Um, which is now giving us some advantages. It's not going to help us a lot until the leak. I've got to clear that. This hex is in a zone of control here. <clears throat> so next turn, I'm going to have to cover that so that we can, or, or, or at best, eliminate these units here so that we can clear this road to Minsk or this path to Minsk for the rail so that these guys can count supply back either by foot or you know number of hexes or by road, 21 hexes, back to a rail source. So it's a little bit tricky. You, you know, you've got to get uh, points on the map where the rail intersects with the road and that is not always uh, obvious. That's why Minsk is so critical. There are other areas that, that matter. Uh, and we'll get to those in a second if I re remember to do that. But we'll see how we go. So uh, up here, let me see if I can read these guys. It's uh, 12th and 20th pound Panza are uh, pushing up north towards Vitebsk. It's really more of a feint than anything. I I'm not super excited about trying to head this way. While it is a little thin because the Soviets have reacted to pushes in other directions <clears throat> and, are, and are heavily defending. So less defended over here, right? Vitebsk, more defended here and here at Orsha. Oh, sorry, Mogilev and, uh, you know, further south, right? So um, there's, you know, there's a little bit of obviously mind game things going on when uh, you're playing solo and stuff like that. You've got to, I, some units, I'll roll a die, odds or evens to determine where, where they go. I guess we could have followed historical orders if we wanted to go do that research. But the fact is that the Germans have not conducted themselves historically, so it's really kind of out for grabs. Okay, so, the, so in the northern sector, you can see what's going on. Here through the middle, a little more challenging terrain, heavy woods. There's a couple of strong points that have been built around this uh, Novoi Borisov, excuse me, area here. So uh, pretty weak units, though, with a determined attack. Once I got these guys back into supply... With a determined attack and some artillery and some air support, we could probably knock out those hexes, but it's going to take a lot of work, and I'm probably going to leave that task to either infantry or I'm going to <clears throat> potentially encircle it by, by coming you know, through this area here or maybe avoiding it altogether and taking this two or three divisions here scattered around 
Pans are motorized and pushed through here, which is weaker. This is an area that the Soviets have not been able to reinforce. The strongest units are 444 back here. This is a couple of pissant little units here sitting on the other side of the Berezina River where Napoleon had all his challenges back in the day. So I've got uh, a fourth panzer, seventh panzer with two reduced units and one full strength uh, motorized infantry but supported by 20th motorized, 14th motorized. I'm trying to bring 4th Panzer up through here as well, as well as a fairly strong infantry division. Oh, you can't, can you see those guys? Let me move the camera, there you go. <clears throat> so, now, despite the fact that we're out of supply, right? All these guys are out of supply. They are minus two movement points, which hurts. They are gonna have plus two on their attack. But, which is bad, but the, the most DRMs that you can have is plus three. So, you know, uh, I can't use artillery. I don't get the Panzer bonus, but if I can pile enough factors around this area here, assuming it doesn't get massively reinforced, which it probably will this turn, right? One, two, three. So it'll have six defense. You know, that's probably gonna be a tough nut to crack. This may well end up being yet another diversion. Maybe I'll go up through this woods trail here and come across here and, and, and then strike from behind here. Um, lots of different things we can do. The benefit for the Germans is they don't suffer any major, what I would think, major penalties. If you can bring enough force to the table, uh, you can overwhelm these weaker units or isolate them. And once Soviets go into isolation, they start rolling for elimination. And that's a good thing for the Germans. It does take a number of units, but if you can get them isolated and get adjacent to them, then they are in all sorts of trouble. So at the end of the turn, back over here, where we saw these isolated dudes just here, they're gonna have to roll for uh, elimination because they're next to or adjacent to uh, enemy, enemy units. Okay, so now down where it's all kind of been happening here, you can tell the weight of the advance has come this way. We have uh, a portion of Leah actually just took off up that way on its uh, extended move, uh, secondary move. We've got uh, 10th motorized, 5th SS, uh, 3rd Panzer, 18th Panzer, uh, 17th Panzer. I had to kind of pull off here because uh, the, the Soviets got their two... Uh, reinforcement groups and brought them both on at this southern edge down here and uh, power housing up to either attack through here and uh, cause some mayhem or angle off this way and try and break this supply line. Now the fact of the matter is a lot of these these guys here are all going to be are all out of supply right now so they have that going against them. Uh, most of these units moved in this area this turn, but they will be out of supply next turn. So it, while, you know, we're just not letting that stop us, right? We're not letting that slow us down. We, we piled the combat factors into Borusk here and took the city pretty handily. Didn't take any losses. We actually just forced a retreat. These guys were forced to retreat out. So, it's been an interesting little battle. I'm surprised with cities that there's not an ignore retreat command. They couldn't, um, excuse me, they couldn't do a no retreat command because they were too close. There was an HQ, there's an HQ somewhere here, right? or they're not within range of an HQ, or whatever, whatever, the re whatever the rule is, they weren't able to, to execute an order to, to do the no retreat or do the extra retreat. There are two choices you can make. Nevertheless, um, I probably would have wanted to retreat out of there anyway and keep this 444 unit for, for combat later on. So that's what's going on in this sort of sector of the map. You can see there's nothing else really up in the north, nothing going up over there. We're just rapidly trying to push units to the front. Uh, similarly along here, this is a great little area to explore actually. Because <clears throat> this is the railhead here that I moved down a little bit because I'm trying to push 
uh, you know, the ridge for supply down a little bit further south for some units that are down there. But we're covering these dumps that are here with these SS folks for the moment. But this is the supply hub because this is where the, the rail intersects with the road. And so 21 hex is back that way, right? Up, the, up this road and then seven uh, hexes uh, over overland uh, to the infantry units or the, the army units will put them in supply. So it's quite a distance, but it is not, uh, it is not uh, as far as you think when you start looking at these long distances. So I need to be able to move this supply hub or nexus from here up to Slutsk, Slutsk or use Minsk and use this road here. Uh, because we're we're really challenged. We're at the end of our tether here, trying to attack across the river. I do uh, it is just challenging. So over over here, this is about as far as we're going to be able to push really, until I can either lay a bridge. And the intention was to to lay a bridge here, um, but I uh, did a you know random die roll and said, hey, are these guys going to move up here and and put a zone of control here or not? And the Soviets decided that was a good idea. Uh, so the, the Germans are in a bit of a quandary. They're not across the river. They're at the river. They do have this crossing here under control, but uh, not convenient for supply, obviously enough. So it, it's, it's a challenge. We're, we're in a challenging stage. There is an opportunity to move along this railroad, but golly, we're, not to, we're certainly not going to try and run a major offensive along that which, uh, if you look at the OCS Smolensk game, you know, this is down towards the southern end of the left hand or western edge of the map. And this is uh, the, the woods and the roads uh, all around there were quite difficult to navigate in any case. Uh, let's see. So I think that I think the o OCS map kind of runs down here. Sorry. So down, down here and over this way, something like that. Turn that up a little bit, but you've got the main three cities here that we need to tackle, and then uh, uh, Smolensk in the distance. And we're we're under a lot of pressure as a Soviet player, not rolling well for replacements, not rolling well to bring on uh, uh, strong points. We've only got you know a mere half a dozen or so on the board, uh, extra on the board, so it's hard. Hard for them right now. And uh, they're actually currently at, I think uh, the Germans have 30 victory points right now. They're gonna pick up, uh, they just captured this this turn, so they'll get a VP and then an extra uh, one or two for the mandated attack that the Russians are holding onto. And we'll have to reset that once the game turn uh, ends. And I'll show you, here's kind of a, a skim look at the the backfield in turn nine. You see all the units moving up and all the garrison forces that we have to have and some, some minor railheads here and there where we just stop pushing forward. And then the massive lost pile, right? Now, completely no, no German unit other than this one recon dude have actually died completely, although there are a number of armor steps that have been lost, and so there, there's a little bit of pain going on for the uh, for the Germans. But at this point, they are not too worried about uh, their strength. That's not true. That's not the only unit that's died. Actually, here there are some more dudes over here. So there's there's a small handful there that've kind of kind of taken the uh, taken one for the team, as they say. This turn was dry storm, so there was no air. So while I do have all these guys uh, in the air box, they all are actually down here, and we're gonna have to roll uh, for recovery for all of those dudes for next turn. And uh, likewise for the Soviets, we didn't, we didn't move that. And I have a wristband on. <laughs> That's from the basketball tournament today. That's pretty funny. Guess I need to take that off at some point. All right, so you know the here's the here's the replacement pool. Like all these guys are reduced up in the cadre box, and I've got two units ready to ready to come onto the map, and it's just it's just hard, 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 hard. All right, uh, and just if so, if we do this, let's have a look here, right? 
So that's the current situation. You can see the pretty sketchy defense defensive line. <coughs> and if I show you this, I'll straighten up the camera. Here is where we here is where we started. This was game turn one. This is what it looked like game turn one, I believe. So I think that's right. Is that the right? Uh, yeah, that's Minsk. Minsk over on the right hand side. Uh, so you know, a lot of t a lot of ground covered in nine turns, but uh, boy oh boy, we have a long way to go. We're halfway across the four map expanse. And do you like my purple towel? It is not uh, uh, to celebrate Caesar. It is merely to soak up water from my leaking window. All right, adios. We'll soldier on for another few turns. I, I kind of want to get to the, see where all this, these reinforcements turn up for the Soviets, but there's really not a lot happening for them at the moment. And it's a little, it's very, very one-sided. Uh, the only challenges, the, the logistical challenge that the, the Germans have in um, mismanaged supply and the inability to get supply where it needs to be because, uh, you know, I've got a, a railhead here. If I move uh, uh, supplies to here by rail, say I move two to here, well, the units, it's not close enough to the front to do any worth, worth anything worthwhile. So I've got to flip it to a mobile MSU and then I lose one, you know, it doesn't become two MSUs, it, you just automatically lose one. So I'm greedy, I'm reluctant to lose uh, supply. So here I am here with a whole bunch and there's uh, other stacks around on the map. And it uh, means that there's a finite number of supply uh, uh, chits uh, here and I have just three that I use this turn. Three that I use this turn, and these guys are going to uh, allow me to bring six supply on by rail out of a possible ten that can come on. So the whole that whole uh, nexus of rail, road, limited number of MSU counters, and this flipping business, and the ranges for supply all cause the the challenge for the Germans are on their ability to be effective and, uh, and push the attack forward, which is good, but it seems highly inefficient to me in terms of gameplay mechanics as to how this all transpires and how it all works. And I don't understand why it is the way it is. I have reconciled myself with it, so I'm good with it, uh, but I uh, think it could have been done differently, um, perhaps, but that is what it is. Maybe that's my OCS bias sneaking in there. All right, catch you all later. Longer than I thought it would be, but that's the turn nine update on EFS. I'm Group Center. Ciao.